we've gone through strength and numbers again, like Ian and Marcel last year. So um, they, we called our, t our uh, talk, you know, the education revolution needs you to get a bit of attention. And so we did, you know, there was about six people on Twitter talking about us. I think we were trending that day. And um, so we got called the education revolutionists, which got us a bit nervous because we don't know the first thing about a revolution. So we decided to, to Google it. And it's actually very simple. It's wee buns. The thing you need to do to start an education revolution is, is five, five simple steps. Um, first of all, you need to realise a goal. You need to build support. You need to um, find like people who are ready for action and you need to take action. Um, so the goal of our revolution is change and we want change. And we want change in the way people design for learning, the way that people approach learning. The education revolution has already started. Um, luminaries like Sir Ken Robinson and the wildcard ed edgy person Goldie have already started this in the UK. Um, so exhibit A, why do we need a revolution? Um, on the left, you have 1950s classroom. People here are doing old things in old ways. Here, 60 years later, in 2011, people are still doing old things in new ways. We need to start doing new things in new ways. Um, this is a vision of education in the future from the 1950s. In the 1950s, these things called teaching machines emerged, and they were to formulate correct behaviour and to um, enable the student to, to get the right answer and to learn to be right. And the scary thing is that in the first one, people, people were, you know, they were um, sitting behind a screen pushing buttons. They're still, in, in 2011, the, um, sort of the catchphrase in education is one laptop per child. Children are still looking at screens and pushing buttons, and this needs to change. We need to, um, this is a um, Microsoft, a still from a Microsoft video, and it's their um, vision of education in 2019. The children there are having mad crack, talking to children in other countries about water. It's really great. The people in the background, they're still sitting in rows, they're still sitting in a classroom. So we need to, like, how do we face this task that we're trying to, you know, um, go on? And we need to design new models, whole new models of learning, like this space in Denmark, and it's a completely flowing space. There's no classrooms. It's designed for self-directed, reflected learning. So we have to recognise that there's other spaces as well, like the community, the museum, learning spaces. So we need to design for different ways of, of sitting, not sitting our, our students in rows anymore, maybe stacking them instead, and also designing for things like no shoes, you know. And how do you design for that? Because it's believed that that's a, a good way of educating, because they're more comfortable relaxed and also you know designing for real technology integration why do we lock our computers away in one room and shove them in the corner of classrooms you know we need to you know technology that's relevant and technology for creating as well you know for programming and building robots like in high tech high and you know dispersed mobile flexible and we also have to consider that's change for now but you know new emerging future technologies and engaging you know in ubiquitous computing and, and nanotechnology the internet of things and how we can engage our, our students in more playful embodied um, interactions and learning experiences. But sure, I mean, that's grand, but that's, you know, that's Scandinavia, that's the US. I mean, can Irish designers and educators be the Robin to Rory Quinn's Batman and save education before it explodes? That's well, what I want to know. Well, Kiva, yes, you know, the, the revolution has already started here, and, you know, you've met some of them and we're oh, yeah. working with them, so, you know, Bridge 21 here, that's a whole new model of learning. It's team-based, project-based, it's um, cross-curricular, it's completely technology integrated, and it's not just in this space here in Trinity, it's also rolled out to schools where teachers are actually um, taking on the model in their classroom, like this teacher here, and he's totally integrated this technology into this classroom, so much so that there's several metres of extension leads that I've tripped across, and um, he's completely completely just embodied and brought the technology into his learning. Um, and Kamara Education have supplied the laptops for this classroom too. And then there's the real educators and they're out there, they're innovating every Monday night on EdChat IE. They, they collaborate, Stephen also takes part in this. And um, they, a couple of the school, a few of the teachers got together and they started doing this Twitter art treasure hunt um, in the last um, education year. So what are the opportunities for designers? Well, the opportunities as we see them, it's number one, is design for movement, design for flexibility and adaptability. This is a space designed by a 16 year old student. And you know, what sort of space what sort of technology, what sort of support would this learning space need? Um, design for collaboration, design for student to student, student to teacher, teacher to teacher. This student has realised that teachers need to collaborate as well. Um, incorporate, you know, have some radical collaboration in your own design process. Collaborate with teachers and collaborate with students as well. You know, and it's about recognising, as Emmett said, that, uh, you know, students are digital natives now and we have to, you know, engage them that in their, their what Stephen Heppel calls their third place and they're online, they're switched on and, you know, it's about engaging them in social learning as well and, and engaging the students in selecting, you know, how and what they learn and, you know, it's about as well, you know, designing for your user, engaging them in the design process like we're doing here and, you know, as this student said here, you know, we need to design more to do with te teenagers but also we need to design for the educators too and, um, you know, recognising all the users involved in the learning environment. 
So, you know, these are just some of our, the opportunities that we see. There's obviously so many more. And, you know, the next step in the revolution is to take up arms and, you know, take action. And at TFE, we're taking action, along with Ray, who's speaking next. We have 30 teenagers designing for 21st century learning in the NCAD um, Head School Dublin NCAD Gallery. Um, come and join us, have a chat and join the revolution.